Today we're going to be talking about quadrilaterals. It's a fun way of saying a four-sided polygon. Lots of fun. All right, let's take a look at some four-sided polygons or some quadrilaterals. We've got some all over the screen here. This one around the outside is definitely not a polygon because it has the curved edge, but that's just the border, so don't even worry about that. All right, let's look at specific characteristics or properties of different types of quadrilaterals. A trapezoid is a, is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. I marked them with these arrows here. These sides are parallel. A parallelogram has two sides of parallel lines. Both the top and bottom are parallel, and also the two sides here are, are parallel. So opposite sides of a parallelogram are parallel. Makes sense. All right, let's look at another so two more types of quadrilaterals. A, re a rectangle has four right angles, or four 90 degree angles. A square has four 90 degree angles and four congruent sides. So we could say that a square is a type of rectangle, because a rectangle simply has four right angles. A square has four right angles but it's a special type of rectangle with four congruent sides. A wrong bus, it's not a wrong bus, like if you were meaning to go to the zoo and you accidentally ended up at the library because you took the wrong bus, that's not exactly what we're talking about. This is a wrong bus with a silent H because we're not English teachers. We don't have to worry about spelling things in a nice, convenient way. All right, a rhombus is a special type of parallelogram that has four congruent sides. So a rhombus is a parallelogram, but all parallelograms are not necessarily rhombi. Let's look at the properties of a parallelogram. We've talked about already that they have both sides. Opposite sides are parallel. Also, opposite sides are congruent. They're the same length. We can also see that opposite angles are congruent. As you see in this picture, I represented those angles using blue dots and orange dots, and I'll continue to do that. And the diagonals, they bisect each other. When you draw a diagonal and a diagonal, these are congruent. That's kind of a neat property of parallelogram. Also, angle A plus angle B is equal to 180 degrees. And we know that if it's equal to 180 degrees, it's a supplemental angle. All right, so these two are supplements to each other. Properties of rectangles. Remember, rectangles are simply shapes with four 90 degree angles. So they are also parallelograms. You see, because the sides are parallel. So because they're parallelograms, they share those same properties that we talked about before. All four of the outside properties are the same. Plus, we have a new property, and that is that our diagonals are congruent. The properties are wrong, but instead of drawing all the pictures over again, basically I'm going to start saying this. It's all that other stuff including opposite sides are parallel, opposite sides are congruent. The, the uh, diagonals end up being um, congruent. The diagonals here are congruent. The diagonals meet in the center and create congruent sides. Angles A and B are supplementary, and they are opposite angles are equal. So all of those things apply for a rhombus, and rhombus has one more a special characteristic, and that is that the diagonals bisect this angle. All right, so the angle right there is bisected by the diagonals. All right, and remember the rhombus has four congruent sides and parallel. Um, the opposite sides are parallel, so two sets of parallel lines, and that means that these diagonals bisect the angles. One more special kind of shape. I really need to get into saying 
polygon instead of shape, but it's a shape too. And it's a square. And it has all that other stuff and the diagonals are congruent. So all those other characteristics, two sides are parallel. These parts here are congruent, but the entire diagonals are also congruent. We also have the opposite angles are equal, the opposite sides are congruent. So we've got quite a bit of properties for our square. Now there's one property that you won't find in most textbooks and that is that um, they like to live in a pineapple under the sea. That's right. <laughs> okay, so to help try and clarify, I've created this is a one-of-a-kind thing. You'll, you won't find this anywhere else. It's a, it's a quadrilateral Venn diagram. Usually Venn diagrams are made using circles, but I thought this would be appropriate since we're talking about quadrilaterals. I make one using a quadrilateral. So you can see the outside is a quadrilateral. All the other polygons fit inside this because all of them are quadrilaterals. They all have four sides. The parallelogram I'm going to keep pretty big because a, a parallelogram fits inside of quadrilateral and has many shapes that fit inside of it. Trapezoid, kind of on its own. Sorry, trap. You're down here by yourself. But a rectangle, as you can see, is a type of parallelogram and a rhombus is a type of parallelogram. See? A square is a type of rectangle and a type of parallelogram and a type of quadrilateral, so it'll be in the very center there. All right, so hopefully this diagram has helped you <laughs> to understand quadrilateral. I thought it'd be funny to make a Venn diagram using all quadrilaterals. I hope that's been helpful for you. Have a great day.